everyone. I'm Melissa McAllister. And I'm Dr. Lauren Fitzgerald, and you're listening to The Made Fits Show. So for years, we have dedicated ourselves to giving others the tools to feel their absolute best through the power of health, fitness, and nutrition coaching, as well as both Western and functional medicine. Each week on The Made Fits Show, we're going to talk about everything from health trends, nutrition, topics like HRT and medical weight loss, self-care, wellness hacks, different workouts, fasting, our favorite recipes, and more. We promise that the May Fit Show will be educational, entertaining, but most importantly, worth listening to each week. Now, with small, dedicated changes, you can live a healthier, more heart-filled life. We're excited to show you it's possible with the right strategies that are simple to adopt. We are a certified nutritionist and a board-certified medical doctor who have a combination of over 50 years in the health and fitness world and are passionate about empowering others to take the leap and live their healthiest, happiest lives by using the tools we give in this podcast. Hello, everyone. It is Dr. Fitz and Melissa, and today we have our first Monday banter episode, and we were talking about what we wanted to talk about, and we figured that one Monday out of every single month, we are going to just have banter and conversation. And this goes back to the the whole, like, we wish we could be a fly on the wall when y'all are together and talking because we get that often. And um, we literally, this is off the cuff. So who, if you're listening, just know that we have not planned at all what we're going to talk about. Melissa hasn't even told me the first thing that she wants to talk about. And um, <laughs> so I'm kind of excited to hear where this is starting and where it will go. But just so you know, this is um, this is going to be uh, entertaining and educational and who knows what else. <laughs> so Melissa, what's Number the first one. topic? I want it. Well, this is not the first topic, but the first observation for those of you that are watching the YouTube video, how much tanner Miss uh, Dr. Lauren is than I am. I mean, I'm going to, I'm almost that, but she's got beautiful color, um, beautiful color. And I, I'm very Blanco. <laughs> yeah. But you just, you just got to Mexico for the next two months. So it won't take you very long to move that Blanco to the nice and tan. And you know, the, the funny thing is too, is when I was here, gosh, last, you know, about a year ago at the same time, I would walk in the morning like you do. And, and what I, people need to realize is of course we still use, uh, sunscreen when needed. Um, we, we also believe in getting real sun on your skin, but, um, I got super tan and it was from my very early morning walks. When you look at the, the, the index, you know, the heat index mm -hmm. the density, and it's at zero or one. So there's, you know, the, the harm of the sun is very low, but yet you still get great color early in the morning, taking those. Morning totally. Walks. So that's my, I don't, I don't wear sunscreen at that time. Um, I, in the middle of the afternoon, if I know I'm going to be out for hours and hours, I will reapply uh, natural sunscreen here and there. But in that those morning hours, I got a beautiful glow, um, and it didn't have the the you know the high effects of the noon sun on my skin. So, so don't. <laughs> I I have not gotten in my swimsuit once since I've been here. I've been here almost two months, and this no. is literally from walking and riding my bike outside. And I typically will go in the morning or in the afternoon, but it's been very rare that I've been out in the sun, like just went for a little walk and went fishing. And I've, you know, kind of laid, that was actually the first time I laid out, but not, I mean, I wasn't even, I was in a sports bra and, and shorts. So yeah, I'm, I'm a, a fan of, I used to, man, you know, you and I've been on plenty of vacations where we sat in the sun in the middle of the day just to get tan. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I've, I've grown up since then. Um, okay. Yes. So, uh, Dr. Lauren, my, the first topic I want to talk about has been something that's been on my mind lately, a lot lately. And I do think it affects our audience. And so I'm hoping that we can kind of give them our perspective and help them see, uh, the good and the harm that can come from social media, because I know mm. that you both have as people that put ourselves out there, um, as, you know, fitness and nutrition experts, have um, gotten, um, you know, people. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, she's tiptoeing. <laughs> people uh, that you know are that are hateful, and uh, I know that you've had had uh, some. I think brothers, you know, doctors, some brothers that are doctors, you know, have their opinion about you. I had I had a girl who her only certificate was a high school diploma, but 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 she knew more than me. <laughs> Mm. me a few times and so I am just in today's world of social media um 
it's really difficult to come on without seeing some professional bash another professional. And uh, it's, it's really getting hot and heavy in the in the health space where you have a, a very educated doctor, uh, you know, psychologist, nutritionist, dietitian, um, scientist. It doesn't matter. Uh, and, and their whole platform is bashing other people instead of really just taking, you know, their own passion and their own love for uh, educating other people. And I think it's getting, I think it's getting kind of ugly. And so uh, I'd love your opinion on that as well. I, I am very guarded with my social media anymore. I know you are as well, but if you follow accounts uh, and even if they give you good information here and there, if, if there's a real negative space around it, or you find that they're spending more time um, just being hateful than they are being useful. Uh, you'll find somebody that's useful without having the hate behind them. And um, totally, I think it's just so much better for your for your mind space. I'm wondering, are you are you bringing this topic because you watch my stories um, on Saturday talking about the the research that I'm doing just to get ready to be interviewed by Sean? Yeah. So yeah. so I it's interesting because it, and you know, an episode that you and I are going to be doing in the near future is talking about what we've changed as far as our opinions of, of all things health and wellness just over the years since, you know, we've known each other. Um, but I, I've definitely, I've learned to not be so, um, just gung ho on my stance on everything or anything, because I recognize that it could change and it could change based on a real good set of like a randomized control trial, like, you know, evidence-based, but then again, there's that whole mind, not mindset, this, this whole thing of, well, even a randomized control trial that is done properly, I still question the bias behind it because those are expensive and they're paid for. And if you really think that the outcome is not influenced by who is funding those big randomized control trials. I don't know. So I've gotten to a place where I really, I, I trust a combination of my own life experience. Um, I, I look at research now myself instead of just trusting an expert that's quoting research. Cause I've recognized that a lot of experts that quote research never actually read the research and people that are not watching on YouTube are not seeing all my air quotes. Yeah, yes. <laughs> but, um, so, so I think being in the space of medical weight loss has made it where I have had to get back into following both sides so that I can hear, you know, both arguments. Um, and, and I'm now following some negative accounts, which I typically don't. The moment that a, an account is, is negative or whatever, I typically unfollow them because I'm protecting what goes on in my, my, in, in through my brain and, and my eyes. Um, but because I'm in this medical weight loss space, I've really had to educate myself on what both sides are saying. And it's pretty crazy because both sides of there are people, scientists and doctors that I respect that are just, I, they're, <laughs> they're tiptoeing. Taking a, yeah, I know. I, I know. I'm trying to tiptoe. Well, like there's this one that, um, that's, it's an, yeah, I think, and I don't even want to give them. I'm not even going to give them shout outs because I don't want to add to their followership because I think that it's just breeding more, you know, because the more negative you get and the more controversial, the more followers you have that that that's what um, the algorithm supports. <laughs> and that's why I think that, you know, oftentimes, yeah. So there, there is one camp that as far as medical weight loss, and I'm just going to use this as an example, one camp that is pretty much, you know, against all use of, of those kind of drugs. And then one camp that is completely for, and is basically saying that the ones that are against it are all of the, the wellness gurus that are, you know, completely full of crap. And while yes, there are some wellness gurus that are completely full of crap. Um, I, I can't help, but think that like, there's this one doc who he literally, he, he and his brother have a podcast and they're both physicians and they're both really intelligent physicians. But when I listen to their podcast, I agree with like 75% of what they say. And then the 25% they're bashing. I mean, they will constantly bash functional medicine doctors. And, you know, the fact is that they can't hop into my brain and see all of the patients that the functional medicine route has changed their lives. 
And I just, I don't believe that all of them that have had changes and I've got so many of my patients that literally follow me that will do, you know, Mm -hmm. follow me to the ends of the earth because using the functional medicine tools that has changed your life. And I don't believe that all of them, it's a placebo effect. I just don't. So I don't understand why we can't, we can't just, especially in the health and wellness and medical world, don't we all have the, the underlying desire to just help people? But again, greed, ego, money, all of the things, all of the things, you know, sins, the, the, all of the things that make us fall short of the glory of God um, get to us. And I think that, you know, it's, that's, it's just, it's a crazy place right now. It, really it makes is. me sad. It there's really a lot is. of people, there's a lot of people that are scared to even try um, using you know, drugs like semaglutide or terzepatide because of all of the hate that is given towards people that want to even consider trying using it. And that's just one topic of many. I mean, it's mm-hmm. what, what are your thoughts? Well, I think people, you nailed it on the head. I think people with the biggest opinions and the biggest opinions about others have never done clinical work. Um, yeah. I think you get in the trenches and you do a lot of clinical work, which I did through school. And of course, now I've done for several years with actual clients. Um, you really get to see, uh, trends. You get to see things that, uh, work, you know, 90% of the time, uh, things that, you know, don't work 90, but you learn so much through clinical work and the people that have never actually worked with patients or clients, or have never been in that space, um, but have an opinion because they've read a study. Uh, I think that's, I, uh, I really do. And so I just really want to encourage you guys to, as they keep popping up, because I don't, I don't know why, but they just get more. It's kind of like, I'm going to tell you guys, when I see a video or someone sends me a video and you know, the comment section is going to go off. Um, it's, I don't, I don't know what you call it, but it, there's that, that pull to open up the comments because you're having your own, you're having your own thoughts about what you're looking at and you want that validation. And so you yeah. look these comments and there's you, you just, the validation feels good. Um, but it, it's, that's bad. You, you shouldn't be validated, um, by other people's, you know, negative comments or, you know, you just shouldn't be. And, uh, so I, I have been trying very, very hard because it's, it's what we want to it's do. It's human nature. No, it's human nature. I mean, you, you're driving by a car accident. It's na- nature to, to look. And even though, you know, you're probably going to see something terrible, right? It's, but, but if it's true, you got to protect what goes on in your head. I mean, I highly recommend anyone listening to this to on maybe, you know, the first Monday of every month, maybe when you listen to this podcast, make it be a sign of like, Hey, I need to go through my social media and unfollow any accounts that make me feel any sort of way or bring any kind of negative energy or whatever. And just, you know, it's spring cleaning once a month of your social media, you know, but it's, there's this one. Um, so I, I will, you, you know, the, the food babe, right. And then her, her antithesis is the food science babe. And they both like, the food babe, I, I don't know how many millions of followers she has, but um, so I don't think I'm sure I'm sure she's heard about the food science babe who basically, you know, takes a hit at everything that she does. And the food science babe takes hit at people like um, oh, Bobby, the, the guy that um, does the grocery shopping, basically anyone that uses any kind of fear mongering and, and goes through the grocery store like I used to do on, you know, it, back what, four years ago. Um, I still, she will come up with the, so the food science babe will come up with, you know, research again, air quotes of how these artificial sweeteners are okay. And I'm sorry, I don't care how many studies and how well they're done. I don't believe that something that is fake, that is made in a factory by scientists is ultimately going to be good for my body. God mm. did not create that. And I don't care how many, if you give me a hundred randomized control trial studies showing yeah. the safety of artificial sweeteners like aspartame and sucralose, and I, I don't care. Like it goes against what I believe we're supposed to put in our body. And, and so it's just, I stopped following 
I'm still following both both sides of the story. Like I don't follow that guy Bobby anymore. I don't follow Food Science Bay because I do believe that they use fear mongering to um, make a whole lot of money from people. And there's that gray area of like, I want to educate people, but I also don't want people to be like scared that they can't have any food at all. You know, it's it, it's this gray area of like, how do you educate without just completely being a fear monger? You know. Both sides of those stories. And I always think to myself, and I was this morning when I was using my little vacuum to clean my floor. I was thinking to my, I don't, I think about this all the time. Where has common sense gone? You know? Oh God. Of course you can, (laughs) you know, for some reason, a diet Coke sounds great with your, you know, your meal. And it's been, you know, it's been a while for goodness sakes, you know, don't, you don't have to ward it off every, every single day for the rest of your life. But at the same time, you don't want to drink it with every meal. I mean, there's just common sense. And, and all of these, you know, very highly processed foods that you are hearing, you know, they're fine. And I just heard a doctor um, the other day say that he believed, um, you know, cancer is a horrible thing, but the way that you eat plays a very, very small part in whether or not you'll get cancer. And I'm like, oh, don't put that message out there. Oh, please don't put that message out there. <laughs> encourage people to eat healthy. <laughs> so I just, I common sense. I just, I really, I just really want us to get back to common sense and not be on one extreme of, of defending, you know, these foods. And at the same time, not telling people they can never have them. And there's just, there's a happy balance there. I would much rather, you know, I, I've come from the side of like, you know, you need to laminate this and that and that to, instead of focusing on the foods that one shouldn't be eating let's focus on the stuff that we should because if you're if you're like truly eating a protein centric approach to your meals and trying to you know eat the colors of the rainbow i always tell my patients keep it stupid simple i give them a protein goal and then i tell them try and get two to three colors of the rainbow at each meal like like last night um, we had a ground beef. I sauteed it with asparagus, mushrooms, and then I had, um, purple sweet mashed sweet potatoes. So I had a, per- it was good, but it's all whole food, right? I mean, I, and I, I did it in grass fed butter. And so I had green, brown, and purple. And then I had my portion of meat because I try to eat between 30 to 40 grams of protein three times a day. So I get between 120 and 150 grams of protein. It's stupid simple, right? So not once did I say, well, I, I can't have gluten and I can't have dairy and I can't have this and I can't have that. It's like, I, I'm focusing on what I can have. And I feel like if more, but again, those kind of accounts don't, don't get, you know, they don't make money and they don't, you know, there's, <laughs> there's not a lot to sell and make money from. When it comes to, you know, the, just the good old, like eat real food and, you know, the common sense of if it's got a whole bunch of words on the ingredients that you can't pronounce, I don't care what your, you know, pub, pub med, you know, search on aspartame shows me. I still don't think it's good to, to consume and consume on a regular basis for Mm -hmm. sure. So. Yep. hundred percent. So. Literally, that was my, that's, that has been on my mind for a long time because I just, the algorithm of social media has changed to where now I see if I'm uh, killing time and scrolling, I will see posts that, that could be a year and a half old. And I'm like, why am I, this post is so old from 2022, but it was, you know, it's got 20,000 comments. So they're showing me the really big hits when it comes to reels and stuff. And most of them, you know, that I see, not most of them, but quite a few of them are popular because it's, you know, there's sarcasm, there's, there's hate, there's, um, there's absolutely what's because it's controversial and it gets people going. And so it's just, you don't even have to follow those accounts anymore. You just, but if you look at my explore page, Lauren, uh, the other day, I almost took a screenshot of it out of the, I don't know, maybe nine pictures. I think seven were raccoons. So I'm doing a really good job. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you want to know what my explore page is? What? Hold, hold up. So I'm, I'm going to open it up and just tell you, because there's what, like 20, 21 on your explore page. Let's see. So my explore page has two dogs. Yeah. And one one ninety-three year old dancing and then the rest are ass. 
like <laughs> ass account. <laughs> no lie. I'm trying to freaking grow my glutes. <laughs> oh my god, that's funny. But I mean, yep. that makes sense. You know, whatever you so whatever you're searching, you know, you're going totally. to you're going to get, you know, a whole spectrum of things. And just, you know, I really want to encourage you guys. Uh, my message for this, you know, this Monday is to do what Lauren says and to go through your social media and, and make it a very, very happy, healthy place for you. And, you know, if you've got kids, I would encourage you to just sit next to your kid and say, you know, show, show the page or, you know, let's, you know, let's scroll together and just see what comes up on their phone because it, they could be, you know, victims of, the, of that kind of thing too. And I'm telling you, there's nobody more vulnerable than kids. What do you think the outcome is uh, going to be in the next 10 years from kids that were born into never knowing life without social media? Um, I'm really sad. Have you ever thought about that? Yeah. Oh, Mick and I, can you, Mick, Mick and I yeah. talk once he, he is, cause he, he really dislikes social media and he's, um, he's, really saddened when he sees the, the small kids at the dinner table when we go out to eat or with the iPad or the, when we take a flight, you know, they're, they're, they're just buried in it. And he says that they don't know life outside of that screen. So, um, I think it's going to be detrimental. I really do. Um, there's a documentary, um, it's, it's odd and it's on, I, I Mick found it on YouTube. I found it on Tubi, I think. And it's, um, confessions of a time traveler, I think. And it's a man from 3036. Okay. He claims, he claims to be a time traveler. He's got a chip in his hand. Uh, he's, he talks about the future and, and they did blood work on him. They did DNA testing. I won't spoil it, but you're just like, hmm. but the things he says, um, about the future, uh, you're just like that. I, I get it. <laughs> and it, and it starts with this thing. He says, you guys have, he's, uh. I will tell you, he said, you guys are considered us, the idiot era. He says, that's, he goes, no offense. He says, but that's what we call you because you guys have no idea what you're doing right now to about what's about what's to happen in the next, you know, 80 years, you know, hundred years, 500 years. He says it, it's, it's hard. What is the name of this do documentary? Um, the confessions of a time traveler, uh, the man from 30, 36, it's only like 37 okay. minutes. Um, okay. That sounds uh, yeah. intriguing. It is. It's my my hairdresser, she she says, "Is anybody watch this?" Because I need somebody to talk to about it. And so, yeah. Mix watched it twice because he says some things that are spot on. There's one thing that uh, Dr. Lauren, you will message me after you watch it because you're like, "I don't agree with that." There's one thing you won't agree with, but other than that, you'll. Okay. It's it's fascinating, um, and so I do think that we have. Um, you know, it, it's the same thing as, you know, when smoking was invented, it's the same thing when, you know, ultra processed foods were invented, but they just, we overconsume and, uh, it takes a long time, uh, and then problems arise and then we have to correct it. And he, he even says, you know, there's, there was correction made, but, um, there was a lot of problems before the correction was made. So I don't know. He's got so a interesting. great imagination. He, you know, of course it's, it's not real, but he's got a Great. I mean, he's, he's a great storyteller. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, documentaries are my favorite to watch for sure. So it's, uh, we will definitely probably watch that tonight and I'll probably be texting you tonight. <laughs> and, and, and you guys uh, listening to this too, if you go and watch it, you've got to let uh, Dr. Lauren and I know that you listen to it as well uh, or watched it as well and, and give, give us your two cents because it's, it's, I don't know. I I'm surprised it's not more talked about. It's, it's, it's pretty thought provoking. So, so speaking of documentaries, so this weekend was our first, uh, like I told you before we started recording, the weather was just terrible. I didn't see blue sky once yesterday and I've gotten spoiled after being in the Tampa Bay area for two months. Like even on days that they expect rain, it rains and then there's some sun, right? And it's been a little bit cooler according to what they say is normal for this time, but still it's, it's warmer than what I would be experiencing in Chicago. So really yesterday was the first full day that I did not see any sun. It rained all day long. So we went to go see the, um, the Bob Marley movie, the one love, and, you know, cause Ty, Ty is half Jamaican. So my, my, my boyfriend's half Jamaican. So he's all things Jamaican. He's a musician. So he, you know, Bob Marley is just one of his favorite, you know, people in history. And, uh, we were excited to see that movie and we're like, let's go watch it on Sunday. Cause we knew that it would be, you know, a, a wash for weather. So we watched that. And then of course we came back home and watched, you know, some of the documentaries about Bob Marley and this man, have, do you know anything about him? Very little, very little. He, 
literally I, granted, it's so sad that he died at 36 from melanoma. Um, but he, like his whole life was this whole, like, because his, his dad was, or his biological dad, which he never knew was this old, you know, white man from British Columbia or not British Columbia, uh, from Great Britain, um, who basically, you know, had sex with one of the slaves in Jamaica. So his mom was black Jamaican, 19 year old. His dad was a 60 year old, you know, white soldier, um, that, you know, was sleeping with slaves. And, um, so he, he came, he grew up super poor, but he had this, you know, dichotomy of being white and black. And, you know, he, he saw all of the, the political unrest of Jamaica and he just, his whole concept of life was just unity and one love and like the whole Rastafari it's, it's, if you don't know anything about Bob Marley, you should definitely at least go watch a few of his his um, documentaries because, I mean, so much of what what we kind of talk about is like kind of in, in the same breath. But like, let's, you know, let's not focus on the all the bad crap and let's just focus on what we can do to make us better to, you know, change our lives one day at a time, you know? Yeah, but, it's funny how our... Uh, I, I, before the um, podcast, I was talking about watching the documentary, um, you know, for the We Are the World. And here you have originally 47 um, of the biggest singers, you know, in uh, musicians, uh, songwriters in the 80s, the biggest. Uh, and they had to put at the door, you know, pretty much leave your ego at the door. Uh, you know, this is for a good cause. Um and they did, you know, and it was, that's a really good documentary too, because you've got, I mean, there was, and I was a little sad because I, I really like Prince, but that man, yeah. had, I mean, it may not have been ego. He may have actually had, um, like me, a little bit of, you know, problems with big crowds. <laughs> oh, no, he, I, so the only reason I know a lot about Prince is because Prince is like Ty's favorite musician and he prince was a ma major introvert so i think that was more of it okay. <laughs> major, major, major no, introvert it, too. <laughs> i was like please tell me that's it because he he almost came and then he backed out and i'm like please don't because then they were saying because of you know there's too many people in the room and i'm like you know can you be more specific because i've, I've always you know i've always respected him as an artist and please don't tell me he's a jerk because i don't want to hear that <laughs> No, he was like the quintessential introvert. I mean, truly. I really, it, it's interesting because I think you were my first true introvert friend. Um, and I've, I've never dated or, you know, have been in a relationship with a true introvert. But I, I have a new understanding of you guys now. And I thought that I was partially an introvert and I realized I'm probably not. <laughs> just, just because I like my alone time does not make me intro introvert. I am definitely an extrovert. And um, it, the things that you guys face as introverts is, is a little bit different. I, I mean, but, it, mm -hmm. but it's good to have people like the mix in your life and the, the Lauren's in your life <laughs> when you are an introvert. Absolutely. I, I love having my introverted friends and I love having my extroverted friends. Um, they both both fuel me, you know, big time. And so, yeah, I, I hear turning 50, that's just been the thing. And, uh, you know, you know, this, cause you're one of them. I literally have five friends, five really close friends, um, in my life. And I'm very happy with those five friends or five very different people. Very I'm different. Just so happy with the five that I have right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so since we haven't gotten to talk offline about Japan, how is Japan? As as I've told you, um, when I decided for our 50th, my 50th birthday, I wanted to celebrate it being around my family. And I, of, of course. course, I wanted Evan and Symphony to go. Uh, they just couldn't because uh, of their work schedules. Um, but Tanner and Symphony following after their parents' footsteps, or Tanner and Taylor are entrepreneurs, you know, and can take more time off. So yeah. it was really uh, nice to have just the four of us together. And Tanner, ever since he was a little boy, has always wanted to go to Japan. And I've always kind of, I don't know, just because before owning this home uh, here in Mexico, I always wanted to go to a warm place. I always wanted to go to a warm totally. beach. 
and uh, going to a very crowded island just did not sound, I mean, introvert did not sound fun to me. <laughs> I was about to say what we were just talking about. <laughs> introvert. Japan but, is not great for introverts. No. And, and yeah, I believe, were you in Okinawa? Where were you? No, I was in the North part in Misawa, the place that no one wants to go. It's cold okay. and snowy and yucky all year. And and I I remember that and that you know that was uh, you know flying over there I was kind of expecting you know <laughs> Lauren's rendition of Japan yeah yeah but, um, different Japan that I lived in for three years for sure for, for I, I there's no reason for me to go back I I mean my travel agent like I always say is fantastic because she makes sure I do and see everything you know in, in, in yeah. the you know seven to ten days that I go on a trip. So I feel like I saw everything and did everything going from Kyoto, which is very cultural to, uh, you know, to Tokyo, which is very modern. And I, the people I know, okay, Lauren, the pandemic is over. Masks aren't worn that much anymore. Um, and I've never been a mask wearer. Uh, you and I are right. both now. And I, I never got the mask thing. I, I, I kind of got a glimpse of why, why people wear masks. Because you get in that subway, and I'm not kidding you, there's two faces. <laughs> yeah. they, they could cover their lips and kiss you. I am totally. And how, I mean, and they're fine with it. I mean, oh, yeah. Oh my gosh. The, how close they get to one another, because they have to. Um, and, yeah. you know, they're quiet and they're respectful and they're pleasant and they smell great. Um, but they are all up in your business. And so I kind of get them maybe even just for freaking, you don't want to smell somebody's bad breath. I don't know, but I, I, I understand more why the masks are worn there, you know, here when someone's walking on the beach by themselves, I'm, I question it <laughs> or by themselves, but yeah. you know, they're, I get it. I get it. But it was just beautiful. I was, I was in Japan 2009 to 2012 obviously way before the pandemic and so many people were masked there. So I can only imagine what it's like post pandemic. I bet it, still a lot of people are wearing okay. them. Yeah. So did you get petted by anyone? Your hair? Um, I did not. Um, I did get complimented on it a lot, a lot but I did not get pet. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe they petted my hair because it was blonde, but on <laughs> But I, I I got that a lot. And of course, you were probably, you know, a head above all of them because all of them are really short and you're tall. Maybe, yeah. yeah. But you know what? My grandmother went to Korea and she had silver hair, a white hair, silver. So do I. <laughs> you just, you can't tell. <laughs> you're right. And she was, they constantly touched her hair. I mean, my grandmother was, you know, four foot 10 and um, just adorable, but and just had big big old poof of white silver hair and they were taken aback because all they see is that you know black beautiful hair and to see this white silver hair they were just they had to touch it so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so what was your favorite thing about japan then uh, um learning learning the culture uh the shinto yeah. and oh well there's some whale jumping out there um oh. and the uh the buddhist um temples those we, we saw part of those and they were they were beautiful but but i love it's no different than ben when we went to bali and we had ben which i miss um i know two guides that we had um they're so educated if you travel and you can afford to get a guide it it, it takes an experience of going to a different country you know from idle to full throttle we learned i mean I even shared in my stories, if you saw about how to drink matcha correctly, how to eat sushi correctly, I, I had no idea you're not supposed to put the wasabi in the soy sauce and mix it up. And then Mick and I would put our ginger in there too. And then we would dunk our, our sushi when I was <laughs> on her face. <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it, that, that was the, the guides just truly learning um, their culture and how proud they are. They're so proud. Definitely. Definitely. There, I, I am, I feel the same way. I'm grateful for my time that I lived in Japan. Um, I don't ever need to go back. I, I, you know, I, I, I saw, I appreciated their culture. There's still so many places in the world that I want to go. And, um, so I, I've checked that off my bucket list and, and I got to go to Kyoto and, and Tokyo and, um, I didn't go to Okinawa. I, Okinawa is kind of like the Hawaii version of, of Japan because it's it's hotter climate and you know that's where I was wanting to get stationed but instead we went the north 
you know, against my liking, but whatever. But, I will tell you so. flying from flying from Osaka to uh, Tokyo and looking down and seeing these islands and these beautiful beaches um, that were just as beautiful as what I'm staring at now, that green and blue ocean and those white sandy beaches. And I'm like, that's, I had heard that Japan had beautiful beaches and obviously you're not going to go there in February, but um, it could be a beautiful place to go uh, in the summer. We were just a couple of weeks short of the cherry blossoms, which I hated, but I really wanted to be there yeah. during my birthday. So yeah, we, yeah, yeah. So you feel any different now that you're 50? Because the last time we talked, you were officially not 50 yet. Now you're officially 50. I, uh, yeah, I certainly, certainly don't feel it. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure we have mostly women <laughs> listeners. Mm-hmm. I'm having to be on a period right now. And it's just funny that um, I still feel so 30. <laughs> and yeah. <every> respect, <laughs> yes. I feel so 30. There's nothing about me that feels uh, 50. Uh, so I even look at old, you know, old videos and stuff on social media and stuff. And I, you know, I've really worked hard to reverse some of my Hawaiian sun damage and I, and I've, I've done a pretty good job. Um, yeah, you have. In my even, even when I first met you, like you, I, I know that your skin has improved since I first met you in what, 2015. So, which is pretty crazy because that was 10 years ago. Yeah. And, and you know, this is a side note or, or we can go on to the next um, topic. So many people, you know, in here we're you own a med spa, um, that if it's not, I mean, if it's just something you're buying over the counter, um, the chances of it doing anything great, um, uh, it's either going to be internal. I mean, like even hyaluronic acid, I mean, it's better to, you know, to have it internally than to put it topically on your skin. Or if it's, you know, like your amazing med spa, you people I've been there, um, that have these (laughs) That my CO2 laser I had many, many years ago. That was probably the one biggest thing that I did because my skin was so bad in my 30s that shaved off many, many years off my um decollete in my face. So I, you know, I've I've bought all the I mean, I do I have tried the, I think it's Elastin that you I mean mm-hmm. I don't recommend that I try. Uh and yeah. I use it currently because I think if I'm gonna put any lotion on my skin, I want to put the best that I can. Um yeah. but other than that, I, I do believe. If, you know, if you've loved the sun for a long time, you need to, and it's not a pitch, but you need to visit someone like Lauren, because it does take lasers. It does take, you know, really strong quality skincare uh, to reverse it. You buying the thing off TikTok probably isn't going to work. <laughs> it's not going to work. Let's not say probably. It's not going to work. And well, it's, it's kind of like back to the thing I said about, you know, it's pissing in the ocean. If you're going to take supplements and not change your food, it's like you know, do the the basic stuff first before you invest. And I mean, look, guys, you 100% can call my med spa. You can talk to one of the estheticians. You don't have to be there. They can give you advice and you can buy really good skincare from us. But if you're not, if you're eating fast food, if you're eating processed food, if you're smoking, if you're drinking a lot of alcohol, if you're not prioritizing sleep, honestly, don't waste your money. I, I don't want you to, to, you know, buy products from me and be like, they don't work. No, they do work, but you got to change the the more important stuff first. And let me just point out, you feel the same way that you did in your thirties at 50 because of all of those things. Most people in their forties and fifties are complaining about how, how it sucks to get old. Right. I mean, very true. How, how many times? Oh, it's just part of getting old. No, it's not. This is a side effect of your lifestyle and the accumulation of you making a bad decision day in, day out, day in, day out. I mean, like I cannot get over, and I've say this quietly, I'm, I'm the, the condo that I'm renting, it's, you know, a bunch of people. So I have my windows open and like three of my neighbors are smokers. I'm just like, you people. It, look, listener, if you're listening to me right now and you smoke, stop just stop it's the worst thing for you and it will age you so fast man especially if you're white white people that smoke (laughs) smoke and lots of sun it is not cute when you're older just saying (laughs) yeah big time but you feel at 50 you feel like you're in your 30s because of all of your lifestyle that you've had for your whole adult life so that's that's not normal for someone maybe you know 
and certain things, but yeah, I won't go there. Yeah, I, you know, I still get all of my, my, my blood work done and everything when, you know, being a clinician and working with people when they show me their blood work and I do see that they're in their late 30s, early 40s and, you know, the thyroids, you know, a little wonky and, you know, there's the the hormones are a little off and I'm like, I think that's kind of early. <laughs> yeah. You know, what's interesting um, you know, one of the lab values that can change now, again, and we'll, we'll do a few episodes about hormone replacement therapy, perimenopause, menopause. I mean, cause you know, yeah, I mean, I, I almost feel like I might be, my labs actually might look, look worse than yours. And it has nothing to do with anything that you and I have done. It's just the, you know, the cards that God dealt me that, you know, my mom started going through perimenopause in her early forties and here I am, but um, I've never had an LDL. So out of, out of your lipid panel, you know, this, but this is for the listener. Um, typically your primary care will get your LDL, your HDL, your triglycerides. Right. And I've never had an LDL over about 60 or 70. Um, and my triglycerides have always been super low and my, my HDL, the good cholesterol has always been, you know, in the eighties or nineties. And so my, my lipids have always been great. Um, this year I did labs in December and one of the, um, lab changes that can be seen in perimenopause is an increase in LDL. And I had an LDL over a hundred for the first time in my life. Wow. One of the many, the, one of the many signs of, of the, like, I'm definitely perimenopausal. Do you think the, uh, pri- prioritization, that's a hard word for me to say of, uh, more protein, because I, like I have a, a girlfriend, um, loves fish, doesn't eat red meat, doesn't really like it. Um, uh, and she's your friend. I know. Right. I always, she don't like bacon. You guys know who I'm talking mm. about. Um, and we were talking about lab work and, and her LDL was just a little bit, you know, just a little bit elevated too. And I, I was just shocked because she's such a fish eater, you know, and, and, and is actually very careful with her fat intake. And I'm just like, you know, it don't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So, no, yeah. No. And I really like to talk about that too. Cause I, I get questions all the time. I can't imagine you, you know, people get their, all they get is their total cholesterol. And of course they, they panic. And then I start asking the questions, you know, do you know what your HDL is? Do you know your triglycerides? Did they by chance do a particle size test? And, you know, how's your diet? Are, you know, are you eating this and that? And so it's, it's so much deeper than just that total cholesterol number. Um, so much. It deeper. is. It is, it is. Yeah, well, we've got so many topics that we can talk about. Okay, so um, any other banter that you want to talk about? Oh, uh, yeah, I want you guys to help me get uh, Lauren here. Uh, I've invited her to Mexico. (laughs) There's no problem going to Florida for three months, but I can't get her here for a week. (laughs) (laughs) Probably your only friend that you've had trouble getting to come see you, right? Oh, I really do. Who's that? Well, I, but, but it's because I knew that I, I had this time of snowboarding. And so I, I will, I will come see you. I, I promise. Okay. You guys have to help me hold her to it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I have one more question banter. And this is just because the recent, a, a little over a week ago, the Super Bowl. Mm. What are your thoughts about freaking Taylor Swift being on, on everything? Oh, I want her marketing person. <laughs> I, I, I'm so confused by that young lady. Um, because I am too. I will hear that she's an amazing human who does so much for other people. And then I will hear she's, you know, devil's sidekick. I, I'm, and I have never done enough research on my own to be in. Yeah. Cause I really don't care that much. Either. Um, yeah, I know you don't. <laughs> I've heard both sides and I just giggle because I know people that just loathe her and people that just love her. And I'm like, that's amazing. <laughs> Good for her. I'm just, I'm so confused by the whole thing. And I asked you because you and I follow like that kind of stuff as, you know, we care equally about it, which is basically not at all, but I'm just so confused. I don't loathe her or love her. I'm just so confused at like how this one person is so she's everywhere. Why did she sell her soul to to the devil? And and that's why, I mean, people, yes. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> I, watched, I watched a young Christian girl on a TikTok just bless her heart. She was just like, you've got to quit listening to her music because she sold her soul to the devil and you can't do that. And I'm just like, well, if it pops on my Alexa, I'm, you know, I'm not going to change it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but I do, I do believe that there, there is spiritual warfare. And I think music is one of the most powerful ways that, that evil is, is getting to people. I mean, literally you know me. Okay. And I will be the first to admit, like the music that I have mostly listened to most of my life does not have the best words. <laughs> I e hip hop. No. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I will be the first person to admit that. And honestly, it wasn't until I started dating Ty, who is a, a singer songwriter. and He writes all the words. You should have, when we were first getting to know each other, when I told him that I'd don't listen to the words of songs you I mean I'm surprised that there was a second day <laughs> yeah, but, sure. but it's true I I think that that was my way of kind of justifying the music that I was listening to because if I were to listen to it I don't think my moral compass would have let me listen to it but now like I am that that 40 year old female that's like I, I can't listen to the music because it's literally just well, one, it's terrible now, which I sound like an old fart when I say that. <laughs> but then also, like, the words. I, I just can't get over the words. So I, I do believe, I don't know if, if Taylor Swift has sold her soul to the devil, but I do believe that the devil um, has a lot to do with the music and, and how it's influencing us. But but I was just curious about your thoughts about Taylor Swift art because I still just can't get over how every magazine, every like I just see her everywhere, everywhere, I mean, everywhere. Yeah, and then she's um, I don't know if she I've never sat down and had coffee with her, but she she looks cute and sweet. <laughs> so <laughs> what I yeah the Swift that I see that I am that I am marketed it seems like seems like an okay person and again I mean here I am a broken record but I just I love love people's positive opinion um would love to know if you guys you know what what do you, what's your take on on Taylor Swift do you, <laughs> do you you know do you do you have little what do they call them Swifties these you know do you like your your little daughter's you know fangirl over her or do you keep her from what listening to her I don't know um it's crazy Ty actually went to her concert because the, they gave um, all of the people in the Chicago Public School District free tickets, uh, like any staff. So um, so he was like, well, well, why not? And he he appreciates the fact that she actually writes her own music. So, you know, there's very few musicians that actually write their own music. Um, and now you can get freaking AI to write music, too. So that's a whole nother topic. But um, but he, he went and he was like, you know, I mean, I'm not going to listen to her her music you know, in my free time, but it was a good concert. And, you know, she's, she's a talented artist. So I, I, I can't say that I will ever be a Swifty, but I mean, kudos to her for the marketing genius that, that she is. Cause she definitely. And, and she's I mean, got longevity. Uh, you and I, I, it, it, I don't care what, what business uh, you're in um, creating longevity and, and having, you know, a, a stronghold on your fan base for a long period of time is is impressive because especially if you're a freaking female, let's be real. It's a double standard and staying relevant as you get older as a female is you you feel a different pressure. For it's sure. not fair. Sure. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna close this out, but I really fast um in in one one or two sentences, tell me your thought because I think it's country. What do you think of Beyonce's new song? Isn't it a country song? I haven't even heard it. Well, I didn't even know it came out. Ah, it's like I, the first place I saw it was, of course, on an Instagram reel, and I'm like, that sounds like Beyonce, but it's very country. Um, and huh. they, you know, the first sentence I think is um, her saying something about Texas. Um, now, now I can't not hear because it it's everywhere. Um, and I don't know if it's crossed over to country or if it's just a country sounding song. But it, to me, it's catchy. Um, I don't know. So she's, that's another well, one in the longevity. Yeah, no, but there's, there's a handful of R and B musicians that have recognized that if they can have at least one song that will cross over 
they're tapping into a whole new fan base. So I doubt she's going country, but that one song probably was the marketing genius. Yeah. Uh, Taylor Swift was country in the beginning, wasn't she? Yeah. Yep. Various Rucker. <laughs> so, yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, yeah. Dr. and listen to Beyonce's new song. And I want to report. Yes. Yes. And literally, so this, this is evidence to our listeners that we can and do talk about other things other than just health and fitness. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are other things that we pay attention to and, and are interested in and talk about, but, um, but yeah, it, I, I like these, um, just because it's, well, it's actually, I like it because I feel like you and I get to catch up on things that we typically don't get to, to catch up on. <laughs> so, so, all right. So, um, any last parting words? I still haven't come up with a saying that I want to say at the end, one of these days I'll come up with one. <laughs> No, you started this podcast, so I will end it. Um, Lauren and I really, truly appreciate you being here. And like I said, please give us your input um, on all the things you heard in this banter. Uh, we we want to learn our audience and want to learn your feelings on social media and, and aging and traveling and, you know, musicians and all that stuff and people from the future. But as <laughs> you wake up, you're going to love it. Um, wake up feeling prepared and that you go to bed feeling proud and Lauren and I appreciate you very much. Wow, we've reached the end, but before we leave you, we'd love to hear from you. After all, it's not every day that someone reaches out and asks for your opinion and to us, your opinion does matter. Now, the content in this episode is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Share this episode with anyone you think needs to hear this message. And please remember to do your part of the bargain by rating, reviewing, and subscribing wherever you listen to the Made Fits show. We are Melissa and Dr. Fitz, and until next time, thank you for your time, support, and action you take in your own health journey. You get one life. Let's live it abundantly together.